Welcome to the Stan Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues. Make it a point, folks, to drop in every week. Is he just a rich guy from Greenwich? Or does Tom Foley, a former ambassador to Ireland, have the goods to be Connecticut's next governor? The Republican-endorsed candidate is in studio and will discuss his vision for Connecticut. In our second segment, we'll discuss the fallout for the UConn men's basketball program reeling from allegations of NCAA violations. WTIC News Talk 1080 Scott Gray shares his insight. Then we'll wrap things up with some sad news from the Hollywood scene. Entertainment attorney James Walker stops in on his regular visit. But first, the former ambassador to Ireland, a guy who wants to be governor of Connecticut, Billions of dollars in debt. You're a rich guy from Greenwich. Why do you want to be governor? Well, because I like fixing big problems. And uh, I've uh, taken on a lot of challenges in my business career. And ever since I was a young person about this big, I like fixing things. So I'm uh, intrigued by the problems the state faces. I think my background, 25 years in business, turning around businesses that had similar types of problems to our state government, um, gives me the type of experience and skills that are going to be needed for the next governor to turn the state around. As a takeover guy, you got to be a little cold and cutthroat, right? <laughs> when you go in there and take over a business that's failing, you got to be pretty heartless. And you came out and said you want to cut a billion dollars with a B right off the top. They said, well, how is Foley going to do that? How will you do that? Well, we have uh, next year we'll have nearly a $20 billion budget, so a billion dollars is really only 5% uh, of the budget, and that's a, a business is very... No Frequently <laughs> on a downturn, have to take 5% of their expenses out to respond to the environment. And I think government organizations do, do too. It's, uh, they're very reluctant to do it, but we need to do it. But that's real money, though. Even though it's 5%, that's real money. So what do you see right now where you say, you know what, this is low-lying fruit. We'll start here. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of waste and duplication in our state government. We had two commissions that were formed in the 1990s to uh, look at ways of streamlining our government and saving expense, and none of those recommendations was ever implemented. Uh, as governor, I pull those off the shelf and, and implement them. The first thing we can get rid of is waste and duplication. It's unnecessary. Uh, then there are other opportunities. Uh, we have a very expensive way of delivering our Medicaid services to our elderly uh, patients. Uh, uh, there are probably a lot of opportunities to have uh, private contractors provide services that, that the state is pro currently providing directly uh, in ways that are probably less efficient than what outside contractors can do and so forth. A lot of, uh, a lot of different ways we can do this. I, I have it all articulated in a plan, Plan Forward for Connecticut, which is available on my website. Right now, as far as issues for Connecticut, there were three bullet point issues. Start with jobs. You're the takeover guy. You come in and fix up businesses, get them profitable. But how do you bring those businesses actually here to Connecticut? Well, first, I'm not really a takeover guy. I'm, I'm a, I was an investor. Okay. Uh, and turning around businesses was a, quite a different thing. It's a long-term investment in a, in a company and putting together a plan and implementing a plan and making it perform. You're a turnaround guy. Yeah, turnaround <laughs> right. guy. Yeah. Um, but a lot of what I learned, as I said, in doing that, we can apply to the state government. But I also have 25 years of uh, experience in business. So I know what business people need, uh, what they need? to be attracted here. We, we, uh, we, Connecticut, used to be the economic engine of the Northeast. It's where Sam Colt built his uh, plant for firearms. It's where Igor Sikorsky came to build helicopters. It's uh, where Eli Whitney was. And so um, we have tremendous assets in this state, but our... Uh, Democrat-controlled legislature and uh, others have made it very difficult for employers, expensive to employ people, uh, inconvenient to uh, make investments in Connecticut. So a lot of them have been driven away, and it's been hard to attract employers here. We're one of only two states in the United States that has had net job losses since 1989. Right, and UTC went, out and went to New York City and said, hey, it's very difficult to do business in Connecticut, a major employer. But again, give me an example. You outlined the problem, but how do you bring businesses in? Give me an example where you would get someone to say, hey, I want to come to Connecticut. Well, you have to make the environment more business friendly here first. So I'd start with the legislature and say, listen, every time you go into session and you come into the end of the session and there's this scrum and they come out with new taxes and new mandates on businesses, uh, that makes uh, business people very uncomfortable because they, they need some certainty. They need, they need some uh, predictability in the environment. Uh, before they're going to invest in human capital and in property, plant, and equipment. So you have to stop changing the rules of the game uh, every year. And uh, I also point to our de uh, Department of Environmental Protection, for example, where it can take up to 18 and sometimes as long as 24 months to get an approval 
for a, uh, and a, a company to make an investment that would result in employing people. We can be much more responsive than we are. Streamline the process. Yes. How about the achievement gap? You're a takeover guy, clearly a business guy. Are you an education guy? And I if am. so, how would you solve this achievement gap? I have been very involved in trying to improve. You're the, a Harvard guy, too, right? Yes. Uh, the inner city schools uh, here in Connecticut, it's, uh, I think, a real shame that we don't, aren't able to do a better job in our inner city schools. As you know, we have the largest achievement gap in the, in the country. Um, I will uh, uh, take uh, the actions that are needed in order to change that situation. There are a lot of things that we can do. The school system uh, here in Hartford has shown that they can uh, do considerably better under strong leadership than they have been able to do in the past. Um, our charter schools have shown that uh, with inner city kids uh, we can get much better performance uh, if certain things in the, in the environment and certain flexibilities on the school principals, for example, um, uh, are able to be implemented in those environments. So there are a number of initiatives there I would take. How about those who see you, don't know you, see you got the Republican bid, and say, I've got a problem with these guys from Greenwich trying to buy the election, trying to buy the governor's seat. Are you trying to buy yeah. it? No, I'm not. Um, there, there are, uh, we have the old uh, election law that I'm using where I'm out raising money. I'm not using the public financing. I don't think a uh, responsible... Uh, uh, candidate for governor should use a public financing because that person is going to have to provide very strong leadership in reducing the cost and size of state government. And you can't start off by taking millions of dollars of taxpayer money to fund your campaign. But not everybody so, has those deep <laughs> pockets, though, Mr. Gold. Well, no, but you can still, uh, uh, well, when Jody Rell, uh, our current governor, uh, uh, ran the last time, she didn't use public financing. She went out and raised money the same way I am. It's just the old campaign finance law. In about uh, 45 seconds, quick hits here. Now, you're the candidate from the convention, but there's going to be a primary. Uh, Michael Fidelli, lieutenant governor, he's very competitive. Oz Grable, his numbers aren't showing too well, but uh, he wants to run. Uh, how do you match up with those guys? For folks who don't know you, how do you make the case now to the broader population that you should be the guy? <laughs> well, I think the delegates to the convention already made their decision. I, I don't think the primary voters are going to make a s substantially different decision. No. I, I won over half of the it's, it's happened delegates. Before now. <laughs> it has happened before. I don't think it will happen this time. Yeah. Um, I think people, uh, the delegates, uh, like the idea that I'm an outsider. I didn't have anything to do with causing these problems. I have a strong record for um, solving problems. Uh, and I think that uh, I think the voters are, are uh, you know, want, want new leadership. Uh, they want a new direction. In 30 seconds, they say the takeover guy has a blemish that you had the Bib Corporation. You've heard about this down in Georgia where you yeah. had a takeover uh, for 11 years. It did pretty well. Then it went belly up under your watch. They're saying, hey, there's a chink in the army here. The guy's not so perfect yeah. after all. Quick quick <laughs> well, response to that. Yeah, it wasn't belly up. It, it, it went through a financial restructure, and that's really quite different. Um, and that didn't impact the, uh, the workforce. Uh, that's sort of similar to what happened to uh, General Motors when it couldn't couldn't service the debt that had been acquired. And that was really related to a very large acquisition that the company made in 1988. It wasn't really related to the management of the company, which is what I'm, uh, it's the type of experience and things that I think are going to contribute to being able to solve Connecticut's problems. We're out of time, but real quick, i got to have you have Dan Malloy, who's the Democratic opponent yeah. right now. He's the guy who's running government. You're the guy who's running business. How does that match up? Is it better to have a guy who's a business guy or a guy who's run a strong city like Stanford? Yeah. Well, uh, running a business and running a, a, a city are, are, are quite different, but running a, a state government is, is also different. Um, I point out that uh, my type of experience is probably better experience for being governor than being a legislator. Um, and it's also quite different from being a mayor. But both what I've done and what he's done, they're both executive roles, and I think those that's the best training ground for being a governor. It's better than a legislative background. All right, he's Tom Foley. Nice to meet you. Very Good luck nice. to you. We'll have Thank you back you in as things evolve. Okay. All right, it. folks, when we come back, UConn men's basketball program is reeling from allegations of NCAA violations. We'll talk more with WTIC Scott Gray. Don't even think about going away. Mm -hmm.